Hello everyone, I'm Greg Karlovitz from the Hydrologic Engineering Center. Welcome to our course on statistical methods in hydrology. This video is part one of four on the topic of extreme value theory and will cover a short introduction to extreme value theory. Let's get started. Civil engineering in general, but especially hydrology, is a practice of extremes. Most disciplines figure extremes into their design considerations. In geotechnical engineering, slope stabilities can be thought of as affected by the minimum shear strength of a soil and the maximum shear stress applied to it. In structural engineering, load and resistance factor design, also called limit state design, makes assumptions about the minimum resistance of a structure and the maximum load that is applied. Transportation engineers can look at driver behaviors and highway capacities and consider the extreme observations. And finally, a topic we will see in most of this class, minimum and maximum river discharges. These minima and maxima are what our extreme value theory is all about. The extremes we are talking about is usually the largest or smallest value in a sample. Oftentimes, we are interested in what to expect from the largest or smallest values in a sample. Emil Julius Gumbel is responsible for much of what we know today about the behaviors of these extremes. Gumbel was a German mathematician forced out of Germany by the Nazis in 1932, after which he moved to France and then the United States where he taught until he died in 1966. His 1958 book, Statistics of Extremes, is a true classic. It's not an easy read, but it is foundational for the topics that we're going to see today. What Gumbel documented is that extremes, like the sample minimum, maximum, and so on, have a regular and predictable behavior that can be modeled in a meaningful way. Gumbel synthesized the work of other prominent statisticians, such as Maurice Frische, Ronald Fisher, and others, and added the unifying details that built this comprehensive text that serves as the foundation for the analyses we do today. Gumbel sought to answer two questions, which have impacts beyond just statistical curiosity. The first question is another way of asking, if I have a data point, how can I tell if this value is unreasonably large or small based on what I know about the population it came from? The second question is a little more interesting for design purposes, especially for risk-based design in hydrology. It asks, can we build a model for the extremes of a sample so that we can make predictions or inferences about them? Here are the three key reasons we study extreme value theory. We want to be able to model the behavior of extreme events. These models help us make decisions by tying the magnitude of these extremes to how likely they are to occur. In the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, decisions are often made using a risk-informed decision-making framework, which incorporates probability and consequence to make decisions on project investment. The statistics of extremes clearly come into play in these decisions because we need to estimate the probability of consequential events, which are at the extremes, in other words, floods and droughts. This series will cover three main topics in extreme value theory. The first is order statistics, which deals with the regular behavior of ranked data. It builds the foundation to the two extreme value theorems, which provide models for the behavior of extremes. Thanks, and tune in to the next video in this series on extreme value theory to learn about order statistics and their role in extreme value analysis.